Welcome to Meta Analysis for Hedgehogs. So today we are going to unpack a Java red using Java agents. And um, if you hear any noises in the background, that's my son playing. So I hope you don't mind. Uh, I couldn't do any video otherwise. So. All right now, so our sample for today is this um, jar malware that also jumps onto the um, Corona bandwagon by using COVID-19 as a name. Um, that's the way it was uploaded to VirusTotal. I assume that is also the name that's being used um, for maybe it's as email attachment. Um, so um, what I prefer to analyze the jar files is bytecode viewer because it provides um, several ways to, to decompile it. Like it combines uh, several decompilers in one tool and you just drag in the jar file here and then you can inspect the contents of it. Um, now you need to know jar file is just a zip archive and a runnable jar file, one that you can double click and then it runs, will also have a manifest which states the main class because somehow the um, program needs to know what um, what method needs to be executed first. You can have several classes that um, have a main method in them and for one of them you need to say well that's the actual entry point at the start of the code um, so here we see the main class is uh, something 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 with big i big l if you open this these packages you find it in here and all of them are some variations of the uppercase i l or j l or just l um, which is a pretty annoying obfuscation. So also the strings are um, encoded or encrypted. That's our main method here. And well, this code is um, hard to read, right? Um, I have seen this before, though I think this is just one um, obfuscator packer, whatever, being used on most of the malware. And you will always find uh, an encrypted file in somewhere here. It's this file, it's encrypted. And some of these classes will decrypt this file and then you have the payload. So there's no need to try to understand this when you can just um, try to run the file and then dump it, which is what we will do today. So we use Java, Java agents to uh, run and dump every file that's being loaded and that way you get the actual payload of it quite easily. Um, what are Java agents? Well, they are actually part of the instrumentation um, for Java. They are useful for software developers who um, want to, for instance, add some logging or performance measurement um, or do something else that somehow alters the code, but not alters the actual source code. Like they um, don't want to add, for instance, a printout um, command to every class um, or method that's being called, but they still want to log every method. Um, so they can use agents to do that for them without changing the source code. And um, that's quite convenient. In this um, example tutorial here, they um, implement a class logger, so it will just print out the class name for every class that's being loaded. And similarly, you can, instead of printing the class name, you can just dump the class itself. And that's quite easy, right? Uh, so I found this method by um, an article, which I, I will also link below. Um, and they had um, ready-to-use source code for Java agents. Um, I downloaded that. I downloaded that here into this Java agent 
um, folder and that is the source code. Uh, I would just actually want to change this to uppercase letter because this is the way um, Java should be written. Class names are always uppercase. And um, also, I think we need to change this one. If we do that, right? Not sure. So okay. Um. So the good thing is that they have this. Uh, this is well documented for uh, non-Java programmers to understand. So they say it's actually by extreme coders. Um, and the Java agent is the pre-main methods, which, which acts as the entry point. So it's executed before the actual main method. And then you can add a transformer. And the transformer has a class called transform, which receives every information about that class. And then it can change the bytecode, for instance, uh, which is not our goal here. So the bytecode is returned as is, but this um, part of the code will write, uh, dump the class file into file, right? Um, before it's being executed. Um, the uh, use a replacement so you don't have folders, but uh, instead of folders, you have um, a name separated with underscores. So, um, also, there's a print uh, for dumping class names, so you actually see which class is being dumped. And there are um, exceptions because you don't want to uh, dump all the um, class classes that belong to Java itself. Those are not interesting, right? You can just read the documentation. Uh, so that's actually all you need to know. I just want to do some alteration to it because I don't like this um, being in the same folder where I have my jar file. Um, so let's just put this into a folder like dump classes. Oh no, let's make this a bit. Uh, we will need a dumped folder. Folder, that's better. Um, and then say um, file folder. I'm not sure if I need some imports, but let's see. <laughs> um, they, they will complain if it needs some um, dumb classes, right? And if this if exists, if it not exists, um, then create. Oh, I should not forget that one. Right. Um, so yeah, that's it to these two classes. Now we need to, um, if you don't have it, you need the JDK, that's the Java Development Toolkit. And um, then you can actually um, compile Java. In my case, it's um, no, Java JDK. That's the wrong one. Bin, and there you have lots of lots of tools. And Java C exe is the compiler. And all you need to do is provide the Java file. It will complain if it's wrong. And it worked. That's nice. Um, so now we have two classes, the dumper class, the transformer class here in our folder. And we can use the, um, the jar.exe to create a runnable jar out of it, which we probably need. So we say uh, manifest. Well, let's check this first because I changed some things. That's the manifest, right? That needs to be uppercase. Java is case sensitive. So that's important that you have the right casing. So the manifest will here tell which one's the pre-main class. Um, 
and now we can use the manifest. We say we want to call this dumper jar, oh, dumper jar, and we need the um, dumper class and the transformer class. And that's it, right? That's nice. And now um, using java.exe we can execute ah we can execute the malware with it right so there's a switch called java agent java agent and there we say please use the dumper jar and then we execute with the minus jar our actual malware file which is this COVID-19 circular right that's it and it worked it's now dumping the classes that we already know those are ah no now it's dumping even more and this looks very much not uh, obfuscated um, this seems to be the actual payload which is good um, something has happened here a lot of things seem to be happening here because ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho you may realize if you open folders now it doesn't work it just, they just close uh, right away so it's messing with the system and um, usually when I do stuff like that I um, let it run for a while like usually I have other things to do so a lot of the times I would just leave it on for one or two hours and then check again. Um, but this time um, I would like to go on because I think we have already enough to work with here. And um, I need to kill it somehow. So I cannot open the tools folder. So what I will do instead is um, open the command window and go into the tools folder. Um, because I have the Sysentolin suit in there and Proc Explorer. Uh, yeah. Proc Explorer, right. Um, that one should still open up. Um, I think it also blocks the task manager shortcuts. Um, right. And now, check that. Um, lots of lots of processes. Ooh, that's <laughs> um, that's terrible. That's <laughs> that's terrible. Okay, let's just um, kill the process tree here, and um, so it's gone. And we can check our class files and so on. Um, Unfortunately, I well, it still works. Ah, that one still works. So right click, open a new window. You can still open it. That's fine. Uh, um, and the dump classes are in here. So here they are. We can create a zip out of it. Um, and just rename it to jar and then we can drag them into our yes well that was my son um, where's our tool bytecode viewer open up Right, um, so now you just drag this into bytecode viewer and can check the classes in here. So um, here something looks like this could be the start of it, of the payload, uh, main start class. Looks quite like it. And you see the code itself is not obfuscated anymore, but the strings are uh, encrypted, which is probably RC4. Um, as you can see here, but also if you inspect those II methods, they always have some kind of um, RC4 implementation. Um, so there's still some work to do to understand what's going on in here, but that's already 
uh, quite something you can work with, like kill security. Mm. Yeah. And that's it for today. Maybe I will be uh, following up with a string D obfuscator for this one. Um, yeah, but that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, um, please put them into the comments below and see you next time.